here we go. Uh, welcome everyone uh, to a new Captain Community and uh, Developer Meeting. We have a couple of items uh, for today. Um, I just uh, want to uh, briefly um, give you the overview. So we renamed our Captain Community Meetings uh, into Captain Developer Meetings. Uh, since uh, this is more reflecting what we're actually doing here. And for uh, the Captain user group or Captain community, uh, we are in the process of uh, setting up a new format of this group and we will have the first run on December 16th. Um, this will be really sharing um, stories and, and sharing like um, your uh, uh, how to say, sharing your experience and your use cases with Captain. And we are pretty excited. We have uh, Sumit Nagal from Intuit joining uh, about the use case that they built at Intuit. Um, and he will be, join uh, he will be joining and uh, show us some lessons learned from Intuit with Argo, Jenkins, Litmus Chaos, and, uh, and Captain, of course. So join us also on uh, December 16th. Uh, is, I think it's uh, 5 p.m. 5 p.m. Central European time. Uh, then also thanks to the Captain community, we got a couple of uh, new contributions in the last weeks. Uh, so if you have not joined the, the last week's meeting, um, it is a new service uh, for integrating with Splunk to also send data to Splunk. Uh, for Selenium, that's uh, still work in progress, but it's uh, basically a service where you can trigger Selenium tests, uh, maybe instead of JMeta tests or next to JMeta tests. And uh, also a new service that was just contributed last week. Uh, the Monaco service and Monaco is for monitoring as code where you can configure uh, um, like you have a declarative configuration of your monitoring uh, and uh, this is also uh, provided by the captain community so thanks a lot for this uh, we probably have um, presentations of these uh, integrations also in the next meetings uh, for today I think we don't have anyone on the call who was working on this. If so, just please indicate and uh, we'll take a look at those. Um, yeah, we uh, had a lot of uh, speaking also in the last weeks. Uh, we were invited in uh, YouTube streams and podcasts and also in webinars. But if you're also speaking about Captain, if you uh, do a presentation on the webinar or on a podcast, if you're talking about Captain, let us know. Uh, we have a little bit of um, swag also, uh, uh, t-shirts and that kind of stuff. So if you're talking about Captain, let us know and we are happy also to provide you uh, a t-shirt or so for your uh, presentation. So with that, I'm already handing over uh, to our next uh, agenda item and we will take a look at some PRs uh, that have been linked to the project. So I'm handing over to Florian. All right, thank you, Jürgen. Let me just share my screen. All right, uh, let's get started. Uh, so the first pull request I want to show you uh, considers the Dynatrace SLI service. So uh, let's have a look at the issue. So basically the background here is that in Captain 08, we're going to streamline the way of how we handle events. So that means that every task that should be executed by one of the execution plane services uh, is now triggered by an event with the, with the suffix uh, dot triggered. And then when uh, the execution plane service begins with the execution of the actual task, it sends out a dot started event for that event type. And then when uh, it has finished the task and uh, is about to return the, the outcome of that, it will send a dot finished event. And that also needed to be taken into account for the Dynatrace SLI service, because that's also an execution plane service, which is uh, responsible for fetching SLI values from uh, the Dynatrace API. And that has been done in that pull request. So now, it's uh, conform with the current event format we are using in Captain 08, or which we will we'll be using in that version. Are there are any questions about that? All right, if not, let's continue with the next one. So this is uh, 
yeah related to uh, the current situation we are having with uh, Travis CI. So we did get some uh, credits and so now we're able to run the integration tests again, but uh, we need to uh, limit the time we use for that to, uh, to, the, to the least required amount uh, so that we're not running out of credits too soon and one thing that, uh, that basically was a good opportunity to reduce the time we need for our builds is to reduce the number of platform tests. So if we have a look at the issue here that uh, Christian created is that, as you can see here, we have uh, or we had a number of uh, platform tests, for example, for Minishift, for K3S, micro Kubernetes, and Minikube, and also with various versions for each of those platforms. And we now reduced those tests. So now we are testing the minimum uh, supported version and the maximum supported version uh, for each of those platforms. And yeah, not for each of those platforms because we also removed the Minikube standalone tests because um, our experience showed us that uh, basically Minikube behaved uh, exactly the same as Micro Kubernetes and K3S. So if the tests are passing on both of those platforms, uh, they will very likely also pass on Minikube and that's why we removed the, the tests for that platform. Are there any questions about that? All right, then let's continue with the next one. So this is about the statistics uh, service. Uh, so the requirement here in that issue was to include a CLI tool for the statistics service which should uh, make it a little bit easier for the user to aggregate uh, a set of different uh, statistics uh, that have been gathered uh, over the time. And with that CLI, you can now uh, basically uh, pass a folder that contains a set of JSON files containing the uh, response payloads from the statistics service. And then you have various options uh, about how to aggregate them. So for example, you can merge each of those files that are located in that directory into one aggregated uh, file that contains the aggregated statistics, or you can uh, uh, get a, uh, an overview with uh, different granularity. So for example, you can uh, get an overview for each of those files or um, what you can also do is you can specify different granularities. So for example, if you want to uh, really dig into the, the details of the statistics, you can uh, see, for example, how many requests uh, or how many event types have been handled for a particular service within one of your captain projects. And you can also include uh, or you can filter which uh, event types should be considered using the include events flag. And you can also include services. Uh, ah, yeah, yeah, you can pretty much do the same for the uh, services that are involved. So for example, if you only want to uh, see the, the events that have been handled by the Helm service, you can also uh, specify that in the, in the CLI command. And yeah, this is the output you will get from invoking that uh, command or this uh, CLI. So here you have the, the time frame for, for the statistics then how many events or have been executed overall in your captain execution and then also for each of the captain services and then you also have the granularities of uh, a particular captain project and also for 
each service within each of those projects. And you can also output uh, that data into a CSV file or into a JSON file that you can uh, further use for further calculations. And I think Johannes has already made a draft release for the statistic service. So the CLI tool will be included in this next version that's going to be released. All right. And now the final pull request also is about uh, reducing the time we are spending on Travis. So uh, part of one of our checks uh, that had been executed for each pull request on Travis was to make sure that we are not using any deprecated Kubernetes uh, API objects within our installer. And this has been moved to a GitHub action. And now if we have a look at one of the pull requests that are currently open, you will see here that uh, in the checks, we now do execute this uh, check for the deprecated Kubernetes versions within a GitHub action. All right, and I think that's it from my side. Or are there any questions? I don't have a question, but just a quick note on the previous um, pull request that you showed us. First of all, really cool. Uh, I love the CLI tool because it provides an easy way to get the data I want to look at. And um, maybe based on feedback from, from the community that we are getting, uh, they also love the statistic service and we should think about moving at least the endpoint of the statistic service to the captain core um, to make it easier to also retrieve the statistics uh, from captain. Um, yeah, as it is yeah. kind of driven yeah. by the community, this idea, um, let's consider it to make it as part of ODA date. Yeah, what the that's actually also what, what I heard. Um, that it would be cool to see this also in the bridge directly, how, how many executions uh, already have been done by Captain and uh, actually what is going on in the background whenever you do a, um, a full delivery with Captain and the quality gates. So if we can move this uh, to, to the core uh, and uh, or provide this via the API so we can also use this data in the bridge uh, and uh, provide it more easy uh, or yeah more easy and more simple to the user that would be cool yeah with more and more projects that are more and more captain installations that are onboarding projects and services i think it's there is the need to get a holistic overview of what's going on inside my captain and the statistic service is a cool way to do to give this yeah absolutely and i think at the end for the user it's not that important if it's a statistic service or if the user can just have it as a endpoint or uh, somewhere in the UI. Uh, but it's cool that we already have this, uh, this functionality and we, we can then move it probably to the core. Exactly. Um, may, maybe I can uh, just uh, do a short uh, announcement here also because we are handing over to Ankit. And um, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool that Ankit did uh, to join us for uh, the Community Bridge uh, project. Uh, it's a mentoring project from the CNCF, uh, and we have submitted a, um, actually two projects there, and Ankit was one of the mentees, and he did a really cool and great job uh, in implementing his project. And uh, yeah, I'm handing over, Ankit, uh, to you. Uh, please share uh, your project, and uh, I think we will be, yeah, everyone is, is really eager to see what you've done. Hi, hi everyone. Uh, uh, sure, uh, let me share my screen. Okay, so just a brief overview about the project. So this is a requirement to support multi multiple contexts like kubeconfig and to make it easier for users to authenticate to a captain cluster. So right now user has to pass endpoint as well as API token every time while authenticating to captain CLI with the cluster. So that is to make it smart and to introduce a environment variable that is called captain config so that you can export your endpoint and API token with the co-workers and the people with the other and as well as with the other developers so they can also use your captain cluster uh, kubernetes clusters using your captain CLI. 
so i'll move directly to the uh, prs uh, so this is one of the pr to add the feature of multi context uh, one of the pr is already merged uh, i'll show you the demo i've already created the binaries uh, locally here the one is captain multi and the other is captain smart i'll show you uh, both so before moving forward to the demo i'll uh, tell you uh, so to, uh, i am currently using a single kubernetes cluster uh, with uh, with captain installed in two name spaces one is captain name space and another is captain demo and i am using a single cluster as a two clusters uh, to demonstrate multi context right so one cluster cube context is captain test and another cube context is captain demo and the name space is captain demo for captain demo and captain for captain test right so i'll start with the uh, uh, multi context feature so suppose uh, this is my captain cli and if i need to get my services i have already authenticated my captain cli right now with both the clusters so i'll quickly show you the demo uh, captain multi get services so if i am not passing any name space it will automatically uh, take captain as a default name space so let's see the output. okay so it is showing me the services that is running in my current kubernetes context right uh, let's switch my context to captain demo as soon as i switch my context if i again try to get services it it will show me a prompt a warning whether you want to switch uh, to a new kubernetes context or not if i say no it will uh, run my commands with the current kube context that was a uh, captain demo right sorry captain test right so suppose if i switch my uh, i have already switched right so now if i uh, run uh, if i again if i switch my kube context to the new context that is captain demo it will fetch the services from the uh, new Kubernetes context, right? So in in this uh, in this context, I have no services running. So in this way, I can quickly switch to multiple contexts if I have if I have uh, configured them, and if not, then it will uh, keep the co current context for us. Another feature is to provide a captain uh, captain config environment variable, right? So this is a config. This is a, a file a structure file for captain config. You can define multiple contexts like I have defined here: uh, API token, endpoints, name, and the other one is namespace, right? Na namespace. The, if you don't provide this uh, this key, uh, namespace key, it will automatically take Captain as a default namespace. Otherwise, you can mention the namespace as I mentioned here, right? So here it will only serve the purpose for exporting the config and fetching the uh, API token and end, endpoint from the Captain config file. It won't serve as a purpose for storing the captain con uh, credentials right so if you run the captain auth command it won't store any new uh, credentials in the captain config file it will only fetch the credentials for captain config file all the storing part will still be served from a credential manager uh, so let's let me get the demo of this as well so let's let me export this captain config file so right now i have exported my captain config uh, this file right so if i say uh, so if I run any commands now, it will fetch data from this uh, from this file, right? Captain demo is the context name is with Captain demo. For the sake of uh, for the sake of demo, I'll be changing my api token just to verify whether my endpoints are being fetched from the captain config or not right so if i export it right it is currently uh, fetched from the uh, it is currently fetched for the captain namespace right so if i say i want to fetch it for the captain demo namespace it has changed the api token to s4 right and the kept api token is as well let's change it to abc and test it again 
now the api token is abc so it is serving the purpose of fetching the credentials only once i have once captain cli has the credentials that is api token and end endpoint uh, it uh, it works like it works like charm uh, similar to credential manager so i mean so this is uh, captain config uh, and one one more point if the context is not defined in captain config file it will fall back to credential manager so it's 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 more like an extra feature to export the config and to provide uh, someone else to uh, to use the captain cli with the kubernetes cluster right so this is one part to support multi context and to provide the captain config file i'll move uh, i will move to another part uh, another task that is to make captain auth smart so right now whenever i run cap whenever i run uh, captain auth i need to pass endpoints and api token right so if i'll say i i'll run this and it does the it does uh, Uh, fetching endpoints and credentials automatically, then it will be great for us, right? So right now, all we need to do is uh, run the command captain auth, and it will ask if if the current Kubernetes cluster has multiple captain installation, then it will show us the drop down to select one of the captain installation for which we want our captain CLI to authenticate, right? So suppose I have I have four captain installations in my current cluster, and I only want to authenticate for my captain installed in a captain namespace, right? i'll enter one and it's it will authenticate my cluster and it is uh, starting to authenticate and successfully authenticate right so let's say uh, one one major point or limitation uh, here is uh, if the endpoint is exposed by ingress then it will be able to fetch the endpoint and other way to and the other way for captain smart to fetch the endpoint is if the service is load balancer type service in the cases where in the service is node port or cluster ip it won't be able to fetch the service i'll show you the example as well so let's say i have i'll try to authenticate for captain demo right it will say uh, it doesn't support cluster ip and node port type services for fetching endpoint and cli is not authenticated in that case right so if you don't provide any any endpoint and token it will automatically does it for us and you can authenticate for any namespace explicitly like uh, and demo in that case it will still ask and let's see it and if 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 we didn't pass everything like i only pass endpoint here and didn't pass my api token it will automatically fetch the api token for me right and i've already uh, passed the endpoint here so it will automatically fetch the api token for me these are the two major uh, task for me as a Community bridge menti. Ah, uh, that's it. Any questions? Sorry, uh, I was on mute. Uh, but uh, yeah. I think really cool. Uh, re really cool thing. Yeah, one more thing. So for this feature, there is one breaking change that is now uh, your Kubernetes namespace, like Captain namespace. Should have these annotations. Uh, captain dot sh managed by captain labels. Uh, captain dot sh managed by captains. For every uh, new installation of captain CLI, these annotations will will come up with the installation. But for the existing captain captains uh, installations, you need to add this annotation. I have already provided the command for for the same. Uh, if you see the update command uh, sub command, you will find a flag called patch namespace. It will patch your existing namespace with these annotations and labels, right? Or or you can use kubectl patch feature to patch your namespace. I think it's something patch namespace. Yeah, this one. It will patch the name existing namespace with the annotations and labels. If if you forget to patch this uh, uh, patch your namespace, it won't uh, bring your namespace in the uh, drop down because it it fetches with the annotations and labels. And uh, yeah, I have also considered uh, Johannes and Florian request uh, to ch make changes in the auth for according to script. Mm. 
I've introduced a new flag, ignore namespace listing. So in that case, it won't uh, show us the namespace. It will take the namespace that we pass as a as a namespace flag in the namespace flag. Perfect, because this helps to for automation. Um, yeah, since we, um, there is some possible to wait for user input, and then we okay. need to, to to ignore it to skip it. Yes. Cool. Also, many thanks for providing the documentation um, for for your features. On the one hand, the the cube, the captain context uh, with the way of, of, of switching the captain context. And you also provided the upgrade guide uh, that helps to patch uh, namespace after uh, or when it has been created with captain um, 0.7 because there it, no label and annotation was attached. But now uh, with your PR, uh, this will be done. Yes. I have edited the uh, uh, docs as well, right? Yeah, the documentation PR here, you can uh, try it out in, and give the feedback. So I'll improvise it as well. I'll stop sharing my screen. Yeah, thanks. Uh, really cool uh, contribution and uh, I think very uh, successful project. Um, we hope also to take part next time in the CNCF community bridge uh, and uh, to continue with uh, uh, mentoring uh, new contributors to open source. Pretty cool. Um, I think with that, I'm handing over to Johannes um, mm -hmm. for the work in progress element. Uh, yeah, um, what I have to show is now the finished pull request of my uh, documentation part where I explain the requirements for the execution plan services. In other words, for all of those guys that are writing um, con integrations for, for Captain, please check out this new uh, section here in the developer 0.8 part where you see the custom integrations. And what's now new there is when you go to write a captain service, then you should think about uh, whether your service will be run on site, uh, meaning inside the control plane of captain, or it will be uh, running on the execution plane, which is can be another cluster. And to configure this, uh, yeah, you have two options, or you have to to select the proper way. In case it's your service is running inside the control plane, then you will use the old way of connecting to the NUTS cluster. Then you specify the port and um, the topics you're interested in. And in case you're running outside uh, on the edge, so to say, then you have to go with HTTP where you just pull all those events that, are you, that you are interested in. And this is all now also the, the new format for all those services that are running in the, on the execution plane. Um, yeah, and the documentation is now provided, helping you to um, get also your features compatible with 0.8. All right. This was it from a review perspective from my side. Um, just want to ask Bernd, Bernd, you have a pull request closed. Um, do you want to talk about that one? It is the quality gates use case in Captain 0.8. Yes, I can talk about it. Um... I will give you the screen. So you mean that one? Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, that one is not 100% actually finished uh, because we need to check if all the integration tests for the quality gates and so on are actually really, um, really now succeeding and 
and I'm uh, working again. Um, so this is work in progress. Let's see what uh, what we we've done here. Um, Yeah, one one thing was. Can you update. please increase the, the screen size or the font size a little bit? It's, uh, thank you. Oops, that was probably too much. So, yeah, in zero point eight, we had to make some last uh, adoptions to the CLI, for example, that it also that it is also retrieving the evaluation finished events um, instead of the old one, which is used in the older versions, which is called uh, evaluation done. Um, this was done uh, and as part of this also we have uh, tried to adopt the existing integration tests so, so that uh, it is compatible with the new version of the CLI and so on. Um, if we take a look at, I think there should be, in case uh, when you're wondering why this is already merged, uh, our current workflow uh, only allows to run all the integration tests on Travis on the master branch when the pull request is merged. Currently, we have the problem that on 0 0.8, actually, the all the integration tests are read anyway. Uh, so with this updated integration test, we cannot actually make it worse. Uh, so we've merged that in and uh, let's see if the current uh, integration tests are now uh, running again. Uh, you see here the files changed. Um, the interesting part for this story is actually the adaptations on the integration tests. Uh, where are they? I think it's this uh, co test quality gates standalone SH. And here you can see we are just trying to um, fix all the lines which are currently not working in the 0 0.8 environment. We are adapting the verifications of the responses to the new events and so on. So basically all stuff which needs to adapt uh, and it's almost finished. I would say there might be some uh, um, slight problems, uh, but Let's see um, how this goes. I cannot say more at the moment because I need to uh, wait for the uh, Travis test to finish. I think uh, the, the first run already errored here. We need to see what exactly went wrong. So there are, we might need a couple of uh, runs to make this uh, green again, uh, which we might tackle tomorrow then. That was about that. Cool. Um, should I reopen the issue then, uh, since there is a couple yeah, of work left? Should, yes. Okay. The problem here is really we need to merge uh, so that the tests can run. All right. Thanks, Bernd, for showing us uh, the progress on that issue. Mm -hmm. Uh, other than that, I think there are some other smaller issues which are actually really ready for review. One is that we act on triggered event and finished event. I think Florian also uh, already showed you the same thing for the um, Dynatrace SLI service, which is now conformed to the yeah, event work workflow of the 0 0.8 version. The same has been done for the Prometheus SLI service so that it is conform with that. And other than that, um, you do you want to look it into that linking stages? This is also quite finished. I would be interested in. Mm -hmm. So as you probably already know, we have a new format of the shipyard uh, file. Let's take a look. Uh, 
here's an example of the new shipyard file where we have sequences in the, and the stages are uh, defined like that. And in this issue, we just wanted to create an, a very small integration test, uh, which runs rather quickly. And it should just verify if the linking of the stages, so when the first stage is uh, finished, uh, the second stage should, should be started by the shipyard controller and so on. If this uh, really small sub use case, so to say, works, uh, we want to have an integration test for that which does nothing but executing, uh, yeah, so to say, the content of the shipyard file here and verifies if each, each stage was uh, triggered <coughs> and executed. For this sake, uh, we've uh, introduced a very small service which does really nearly nothing. It's called the echo service. Um, do I have a, it opened here? I don't know. It's in the sandbox repository of Captain. It's called Echo Service, which can be used for really small integration tests. So we need some service to onboard, so to say. And we've created just this dummy service. If you take a look what it's doing, it has here in an event processor, and it's really just taking the triggered event, um, sleeping for a while putting a lock line here out, sleeping for a while and sending a finished event. So this can be used to have a really yeah, small service to onboard in really simple integration tests. We can of course extend this echo service to have more functionality if you need. Right now it does really nearly nothing, but it can be used here uh, in this integration test. And here we see the trigger echo sequence event, uh, which I am using in, the, in this test. So the shipyard controller should actually take this one and the first stage should be triggered. Um, here we see first stage, um, second stage is triggered by an um, echo sequence finished event. And the third stage should then be triggered by an second stage echo sequence finished event. So this is the link, how the stages are triggered then. And then the final test actually, just again as a shell script, which um, is very simple, of course, it just, uh, we are sending this event here, first stage echo sequence triggered. So the shipyard service should actually start uh, to send out an, um, an event, um, triggered event, and we then just actually pull what events were uh, triggered or fired in the system, and this should be the sequence, uh, first stage echo sequence triggered, then the first stage echo sequence finished, the same for the next stage, second stage triggered, finished, and last but not least, the third stage triggered and finished. So if we get these uh, events in the system, then yeah, we can be sure that all the stages are executed. Nothing more is happening in this test here. And this way we can verify that the stage linking is actually working. Really cool. Awesome. Okay, then I will stop my sharing. Okay, then I will take over. Uh, before we go into the next uh, agenda item, uh, I just want to ask, uh, since uh, I think Robert uh, is joining for the first time, uh, if there are any particular questions uh, also on, on, uh, on the project in general, feel free to to also ask them. Uh, I know it's very uh, a very technical discussion here, but uh, feel free since we have most of the team here um, that you could just ask your questions. Okay, yeah, I'm handing over to, to Johannes. Uh, and maybe we... 
if we get yes. some questions in the chat or in the Q&A. Oh, uh, actually, there was a question in the Q&A. Uh, maybe I missed it. No, it was coming in just right now. Um, so maybe before I read it, uh, Robert, do you want to uh, ask a question? Uh, yeah, yeah. So, you know, I, I was thinking for, you know, some checking some compliance, uh, you know, check boxes during, during our continuous delivery clients. Uh, you know, it, it might be necessary to, to run a tool like Qbench. Um, so, you know, I, I was just wondering if, if uh, like during the continuous delivery process, uh, if it was possible to, you know, basically like, you know, do like a kubectl run and then, you know, like the RM and then, you know, run some container in Kubernetes to, to you know, execute what would, what would be effectively a shell script. Yeah, uh, I think I can answer this question. Um, so yes, uh, that, that's totally possible. It's actually what we have done. Uh, and maybe uh, if I find it real quick, then uh, I can also share this. Um, here we go. Uh, because let me just quickly share my screen. Uh, and in the Litmus service, for example, uh, what we are doing is, uh, so Captain is event-based and you just subscribe to different kind of events uh, and whatever kind of event that you're interested in and where you want to execute your, um, your kubectl, um, you can plug in and listen to these events. And for example, for the Litmus service, uh, it's actually what we have done whenever there is a deployment finished, um, it's actually the part where we start the tests. And uh, we are doing, uh, basically, we are starting the Litmus Chaos test by just executing this kubectl inside the cluster. Um, and uh, this is also what you can do. Um, you just take the, the Go service template that we already provide. And uh, in the handler for the specific event, um, maybe it's a deployment finish or a start, test start, or the, the new event series also coming with 0 0.8, you can then just execute your command and send back uh, a finished event. And with this, you can integrate your services and they can also be executed at the, uh, in parallel, um, which is pretty handy. So okay. uh, we can also jump on a, on a short uh, call um, the next day so where I can show you this in a little bit more detail, but, but it's totally possible. That's, uh, uh, that's the, the long story short. Cool. Okay, yeah. Uh, so I'm heading over uh, to Hans. Yeah, really great question uh, from Robert. All right, yeah, then let's, the, the next bullet point on our agenda is talking about the working items for the next week. I mean, we have seen, we, we saw great uh, presentations. A couple of PRs are in ready for review. Um, meaning that we can now jump over to the backlog for the next week. Now on top of the backlog is still my, my meta issue that keeps track of upgrading all the Captain Contrib services and Captain Sandbox services to be 0.8 compliant. Um, almost all of them, all of those are done. All of the services that we listed here, except of the notification service, and the service now service as well as the new load service, but those are actually uh, provided by external contributors and we need to reach out to, to them and to update their services. But for those that we are responsible for, we did our job, which is pretty cool. Thanks a lot. Except the notification services is uh, there we also need to make sure that that one is working with the new captain. Then I have here two documentation issues. The first one is about providing information of, of the new shipyard format in the captain's captain uh, SH side. Um, we already discussed that one last time, um, but I think that still not, um, yeah, it is still there because no one had found time to work on it. Is someone up for, for working on this issue the next week? Uh, 
otherwise I would leave it where it is. And then here we have also a documentation issue that is about checking um, checking the way how the cloud events are described because we also did an update on the cloud event specification since we jumped to version 1.0 for the cloud events. We also need to double check uh, whether all examples in our documentation are uh, valid and still match or are now matching the new version we are using. Okay, um, who, someone up for, for touching the documentation? Yeah, I can take that one over. Cool, thank you very much. Florian. All right, then uh, the next one is an update of our examples. Yeah, because we changed the specification of the shipyard, we also need to uh, reflect this change in our examples. But uh, to be honest, or uh, it would be cool to do this update with the upgrade command that we will provide for the upgrade from 0.7 to 0.8, because then we can also test out whether the upgrade functionality works as we uh, want to. And meaning, that after this one, after this upgrader has been merged into the code base and into the master branch, we should then work on updating the examples. Yeah, but in the end, it's all about um, changing the shipyard file from the previous version to the new one. Is someone who wants to take responsibility of uh, updating the examples? Uh, I can do that one as well. Okay, thanks. All right, then we have an issue that is that came up in the bridge because when we deploy, no, when we onboard a service to Captain, but we don't have a deployment yet, then the bridge is showing here this, this quote, um, this column, and this one should be not shown because it's kind of irritating and not not meaningful. Uh, in other words, when no deployment happened, then no information should be there. Yeah, I think it's a quick bug fix uh, Yeah, to get this uh, column removed. Our master on the bridge is not uh, in this call today, uh, but is someone up for touching the bridge and taking a look at the Angular code. Okay, yeah, then it's fine. I will leave it where it is. And uh, when someone wants to do that, uh, just feel free to, to take it. The next one um, is a bigger one because uh, with the changes we also made with or that are coming with the shipyard controller, we will get rid of the WebSocket communication that we um, introduced in order to make our internal service uh, ex not accessible, but uh, in order to let our internal services communicate with the CLI. CLI. But this will be um, not required anymore. And for cleaning up and for doing a refactoring in this regard, we want to um, get all the code parts out of the CLI and API that are doing WebSocket communication. And thanks to Andreas who brought up this issue, um, he also de um, described in a very detailed way where those 
changes need to be need to be done. In other words, where we need to remove code, mainly in the captain send event new artifact command, as well as in the captain configure monitoring command. And then there is also the API service as well as the Helm service that need to be um, taken into consideration as they are um, sending logs back to the CLI. All right. Um, uh, does that also mean that the um, communication will be then synchronous? For, for CRUD operations like creating a project, creating a service, yes. And uh, for all the others, you need then uh, to get the event, that, the finished event that is telling then you what happened. Okay. Like we have right now, we start the evaluation, you get the captain context and then you, you query the result. Correct. Mm -hmm. okay. But for all those CRUD operations, uh, we will have a synchronous way of communication, which makes it also easier for, for using the API in this regard. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool. And, and just for the event thing, we, we, you still rely on, on getting the finished event to get all the information that belong to this um, task that you were triggering and that were then finished. To be clear, this issue does not address um, the Denotary service and Prometheus service. I've created here dedicated ones. So it shouldn't be that large. Yeah, it, it is a large issue, but. Thanks for pointing out that, right? Um, yeah, they are linked here and they should be completed when touching or when working on this issue in order to get rid of all those components that were web, that are WebSocket related. Is someone want someone working on on that one? Yeah, I'm currently working on uh, making those modifications for one of the services that are affected. So for the Dynatray service. So uh, I would also like to, to take over that issue. Great, thanks and a lot. I, and I took the one for the Prometheus uh, service. Ah, cool. So, right. Yeah, then we can make a uh, cooperation again. Like we Maybe let's that. cooperate on that one together, yes. Great, uh, let's, let me put both of you on the issue. Can also think about doing peer programming here. It must be fun because we have to delete so much source code. <laughs> yeah. <this> together. <laughs> it's all, always very satisfying. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> all right. Okay. Then here we have one that is more a cleanup task. Um, Jürgen, you brought that up that in the license file. Uh, we should not, or we should mention the authors in the way of, of, of naming them, uh, the captain authors, as this is kind of a requirement for CNCF. Is this correct? Yeah, we can just put, right now we have a company name in there, uh, but as we moved uh, captain completely to the CNCF, we just write the captain authors and everyone that has contributed to captain is basically a, uh, um, uh, a, a copyright holder, uh, mm -hmm. and we, we it would just be called the captain authors, also aligned with other CNCF projects. Okay, so we don't have to list any names. All right, uh, ju just one uh, question that came into my mind: Do we do we also need to update the community repo, the examples repo, and all the others, and also the the documentation, uh -huh. or is it? Just about the captain. It makes sense. It's not necessary uh, since uh, it's only the captain core project that has been submitted. But I think it would make sense to go for all the. Um, maybe we can uh, clarify, uh, and uh, I, I can also put a definition of done and list all the, the projects and all the organizations actually uh, where we should have it. Just. Add here a quick note, uh, Captain GitHub. 
Dot.io and community is another one. Okay. Um, yeah, I think there's no coding involved. It's more about updating the, the license file. Someone want to take responsibility on doing that? I can do it. Cool. Thanks. Okay, then we have here another one that is for the configuration service. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. And the goal is that the configuration service will um, keep track of important information like the artifact that was deployed and the git commit that came along with the artifact and also the, the service URL. Um, that has been created during the deployment. And this inf information needs to be accessible uh, quickly. And for doing this or for, for achieving this, we have the approach of putting everything into a materialized view. And this issue is about uh, updating the, the logic that keeps track of those. Or we are currently missing this, this functionality, but we want to have it in there to make also the bridge um, or to help out the bridge to get this information. Meaning whenever a deployment finished uh, comes in, then the configuration service should take out the artifact, the git commit and service UL and put it into the materialized view and also expose this information uh, when required. Okay. Um, Someone up for, for working on that one? I can Let's... try it. <laughs> okay. Uh, thanks, Bernd. Let me assign it to you. Unfortunately, I have to jump uh, to another meeting. Um, I, I gave you the host if you want to mm -hmm. go through this list. Um, we, we have three items left. The last one is for the bridge only, and I assume that Airmin wants to take that one. And uh, we have that one about the distributors, which is which we also can uh, talk about next week. I think we have already assigned a lot of issues, and we are, um, yeah, I think a lot of work is 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 ready to get done, and we can uh, stop here. Okay, then, then we, we finish on time, <laughs> let's say. Uh, yeah, thanks everyone uh, for joining. Uh, it's already at the top of the hour, so uh, see you all next time. Uh, and if there are any uh, questions in the meantime, especially for uh, new um, members of the Captain community, please use the Captain Slack uh, to get in touch with us and we are happy to help out. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye.